実力だ。あ、uh, フレーズイング What's up, everyone? I am the Kaiju no Kami from the Toku and Animation News Network, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Juden Sentai. Kyo. <laughs> okay, I can't do it. Kyo Ruger. Gobusters apparently tried to bring too much new to Sentai, and it failed miserably. As such, Toei went back to basics with their next show, bringing back the spandex ranger costumes, fully costumed villains that would only have an occasional human form, and most importantly, it would be the third series to feature a dinosaur theme. Thus, Juden Sentai Kyo Ruger was born. Two of the most interesting aspects with the show's proportions was the fact that it does not feature a yellow at all on the team, the first time since Change Man, and that Riku Sanjo was the first person to write every episode of the series, including its movies. Sanjo's name may sound familiar to you because he was also the main writer for both Kamen Rider Double and Drive. On the downside, he also wrote for the mediocre anime series MD Geist. Given that Kyoruger only had one writer, that means the story is flawless, correct? Well, let's find out if lightning strikes three times for a dinosaur-based series. The Heroes! If you hated the trope of the Red Ranger being the central focus of all of the recent Sentai series, you will be pleased to know that it started right here. Wait, you mean that isn't a good thing? So yes, our lead star of the show is Daigo King Kiru. <laughs> Played by Ryo Ryosei. Ryosei would also appear in the live action adaptations to GTO and Oran Host Club. Daigo's dad abandoned him when he was a small child to travel the world for an unknown quest, leaving Daigo to fend for himself. This in turn allowed Daigo to traverse the world on his own, making friends across the oceans until he settled into Japan upon meeting a giant robotic Tyrannosaurus Rex that gave him the ability to transform into Kyoru Red. Daigo tells everyone he meets to call him King, which does go to show how huge his ego is. King? King? In his defense, his dad did the same thing, so it must run in his genes. Unlike Takaharu and Lucky, Daigo doesn't run around spouting a signature catchphrase, and he is at least humble enough to recognize the skill of others around him. At least, most of the time. I also hate how he pretty much takes on the final boss of the series by himself, but I probably should have seen it coming given he was the only ranger to receive an upgrade form, which is called Carnival. Oh, my <laughs> To transform into this mode, his T-Rex mech shrinks down to gun size and merges with him. Carnival mode also allows Daigo to take on the abilities of the other dinosaurs. <laughs> Next in our core ranger team is Ayuri Kono's Ami Yuzuki. Ami is a rich girl who works part-time in a restaurant for reasons that are never discussed. She has a supportive butler who is always trying to keep her up on her studies as she tends to lounge around lazily and read manga. Ami is a foot fetish's dream come true as she is very skilled with her feet. There is this little weird sub-story of Ami at some point falling in love with Daigo. However, I can't really say for sure when it occurred. It just emerges randomly at one point when she gets jealous over another character being clingy towards him, and he never seems to show any signs of reciprocating those feelings until suddenly out of the blue at the tail end of the series. I'm not really sure how I feel about this development as it hardly feels earned. It would have been nice had we actually seen something from Daigo revolving around this much earlier than the last battle to flesh this aspect out. It's like 
Sanjo said, Oh crap, I've only got three episodes left. I better have Daigo suddenly show he does love her in that manner. Or something. I love you! No. Oh my. My favorite of the team is the ever lovable Nobuharu Udo, nicknamed No Son. No Son is the oldest member of the main team who loves to punish both enemy and friend alike with his old man jokes. In addition to being a ranger and running his own repair business, No Son takes care of his widowed sister and niece. Many of you should recognize his sister Yuka, for she is played by Deka Yellow's Ayumi Kinoshita. <laughs> Before the show's start, Yuka and her daughter Rika were caught in the crossfire of a fight, which resulted in her hating Kyoru Blue for endangering her. Thus, No Son has decided to keep his identity hidden from her. I also have to say I love the characterization for Rika, as there is one episode where a monster is causing people to see an illusion of a deceased loved one, and Rika is unaffected, spouting this. Yamato Kinjo gives us a fine performance as No Son, whom you may have recognized as being one of the part time Kamen writers in Geats if you have watched that show. The fourth member of our team is the high school swordsman Soji Ripkan. <laughs> Soji is slightly introverted, which makes sense given his age. After his parents divorced, he stayed with his dad to become an expert swordsman and develops a few of his own techniques that help him throughout his battles at Kyoruja. <laughs> He does have a teammate in his kendo club who has a crush on him, though Soji is too oblivious to recognize this. He will often share any gifts she gives him with others, unaware of the reasons she gave them to him in the first place, which does upset her. He may be my second favorite of the team as we get to see him grow from shy boy to grandiose warrior over the course of the series. Actor Akihisa Shiono has appeared in many shows before and after Kyoruger, which include the 2012 GTO series, Daiichi Shiratori in the live action adaptation of Mob Cycle 100, a student in an episode of Garo, The One Who Shines in Darkness, and a series called High and Low. It is also worth noting that his parents are played by Junichi Harata and Sayoko Hagawara, who were the Black and Pink Rangers in Dynaman. Ian Yorkland is the name of our hotshot ladies man. <laughs> Ian and his best friend used to be treasure hunters until his friend was murdered by a cloaked monster. <laughs> Shit up!
<laughs> Ian wanted to avenge his friend's death, which led to him becoming a Kyoruger. Ian acts like your typical Black Ranger and being an asshole when the show first kicks off, and being the most reluctant to reveal his identity to the entire team. This is one aspect I found pretty fascinating with Kyoruger. Not only was Daigo the last member to become a Ranger, but before him, everyone kept to themselves. It is through his blatant disregard for etiquette that the other Rangers feel compelled to reveal themselves. Ian doesn't like how nonchalant Daigo is, which is why it takes time for them to bond together. Susuke Saito does a solid job in his portrayal of Ian. An interesting note, Ian may not actually be the playboy he appears to be. Kyoruger's backstory is that the dinosaurs were wiped out by an alien species who came to Earth with the power of meteors, ice, and a plague. A bird-like reptilian warrior named Torin stood up against the Deibos Legion, as they were called, and summoned warriors to help him aid in defending the planet. This has been an ongoing battle for centuries as the Deibos Legion always tends to return after long periods of slumber to try and conquer the planet again. Torin acts as the ranger's mentor and gives them each a gun-like device that allows them to transform into the Kyoruger's through the use of dinosaur batteries that is also empowered by both the spirits of the dinosaurs they embody along with the music from the Earth itself. Apparently, the Earth favors Samba. Ten years later, and I am still unsure as to how I feel about the ranger suits. I love the scaled arms and the helmets, but the way the teeth is done in the body just looks awkward to me. Although, having some sort of shoulder guard does give it an ancient warrior feel. They all have an attack that pits spiked armor around their arm, which is kinda cool. I'm going Additionally, they each have an individual weapon that can be combined to form a type of spear used to finish their opponents off. The batteries themselves utilize different abilities and concepts depending on the dinosaur, some of which are just awful. There are two batteries that form a motorcycle. <laughs> while others inflate the target like a balloon. To a fart attack. Why? Anyway, the sixth ranger of the team is a samurai from the Sengoku period named Utsu Samimaru. Uchi, for short. 400 years prior to the events of Kyoruger, Uchi was in the midst of battle when his shogun, who strikingly resembles Daigo, was killed. He disappeared while fighting and was thought lost. <laughs> Somehow, though, he remained alive and returns to the Kyoruger's as Kyoru Gold. However, he is unwilling to join the team, proclaiming them to be unworthy of his services. When in reality, he felt he was the unworthy one due to his past failure. Ami immediately discovered this and helped him find his way until he was ready to become a full-fledged member. Uchi then becomes a pseudo-mentor to the team due to his age, although he is technically younger than Nosan, as discussed here. <laughs> that was pretty funny. 
Uchi is pretty awesome when it comes to his fighting techniques, though I wish more had been done with his feudal backstory. Instead of doing some truly interesting concepts with it, Uchi pretty much became a means to exposit dialogue for modern day rituals and celebrations. It is kind of sad how much potential they wasted on him. Still, Atsushi Maruyama did a fine job even though he was one of the weaker actors on the series. His henchin device is a bracelet instead of a gun like the others have, and I love how it utilizes more traditional music compared to his teammates. Like Decker Ranger before it, Kyorujir has more than just six rangers, with four others appearing in supporting roles when the need arises. First up, there are two spirit rangers, rangers who fought to boss in the past and kept their ghosts on Earth to continue their fight. <laughs> This includes the Roman soldier Ramirez, and Tessai, who was from ancient China. Tessai often uses his knowledge to train the modern day Kyorujers into being better warriors, while Ramirez just loves fighting. They are played by Richard Baldwin from Caesar X. <laughs> And Masayuki Di, who was of course Bulkin Silver and Bokinger. <laughs> Following them is the grandfather granddaughter combo. Sort of. The inventor of the Kyoto equipment is Dr. O'Shade, and he just got to the best of him, as we see when he tries to do his ranger pose. <laughs> This in turn allows his granddaughter Yayoi to take over as Violet. <laughs> Yayoi is on the same level as her grandfather when it comes to intelligence, while also being deeply in love with Daigo. Oh my, Yayoi-chan, yappari. <laughs> Anytime the Rangers need a last minute get out of jail MacGuffin, she is there to make one up for them. Seriously though, she's quite funny in an adorable child sort of way. If you are thinking all Shade's voice sounds familiar, you should, as Shigeru Chiba is not only the voice of the weapons, but also the narrator for the show. <laughs> He also played Kabuki Boy way back in Die Ranger, along with being the Japanese voices for Raditz and Garlic Jr. in Dragon Ball, Buggy in One Piece, Uobara in Yu Yu Hakusho, and Kefka in Final Fantasy Dissidia. <laughs> Yayoi is played by Marie Letoyo. Finally, Torin shows he is more than your average mentor, for he too is a Kyodoger who utilizes rock music to transform. <laughs> Juden Sentai. Puns. Why didn't Gabutera eat the clown battery? It would have tasted funny. The villains! As already mentioned, our villains are a race of aliens called De Boss. They're an okay group of adversaries as they do get some decent character development. I just don't find them to be all that special compared to what has been done in the past. The generals of DeBoss are based on emotions, which are needed in order to awaken their leader, DeBoss. DeBoss is the name of DeBoss. DeBoss is said to take on the form of the dominating species of planet, so back when it was the age of dinosaurs he was a giant Tyrannosaurus-like creature, whereas he is more of an anthropomorphic form in the modern day. Oh, 
我の最新進化形態超絶神と呼ぶがよい Toru Okawa provides the boss with a domineering voice, which sounds fine for a villain that shows up for only a few episodes. Next up is the boss's second in command, the Hundred Faced High Priest Chaos, who really doesn't seem to have a hundred faces on his body. Unless, of course, many of them are where the sun doesn't shine. They do call that one down there ahead, so maybe? Anyway, Chaos's role is to collect the emotions of people in order to resurrect Dayboss's frozen heart as he had been put to sleep after the great battle with the dinosaurs way back when. I can't say he does anything special, and rarely does he ever go out to fight, but I would be lying if I didn't say Takayuki Sugo's voice work was anything short of spectacular. <laughs> どうして部下はこんな奴らばかりなんだなんという悲劇を<笑>まあ今さら気にしてもしょうがないか An interesting fact I discovered about Sugo is, while he hasn't really done many main characters in anime and video games, he is the go-to voice for the Japanese dubs of movies that feature John Renault, Ed Harris, Jeff Bridges, and Tommy Lee Jones. Chaos's four generals are Agaron, a tin man who is based on sadness, which results in him crying a lot. The Gold, a lion who is a living suit of armor that represents fury. And the ever smiling general based on joy, Candelaria. There is also the manga loving Lakiro, a scarecrow looking creature whose mission is to spy on the earthlings along with making the monsters grow upon defeat. <laughs> Hold on a minute. A Tin Man? A Lion? And a Scarecrow? What is this? The Wizard of Oz? Does this mean that Candelaria is Dorothy? As if that wasn't enough, each villain is based on a playing card with Igaron as the spade, Candelaria is obviously a heart, Dogold serves as the clubs, while Lakiro symbolizes diamonds. Each general has a nice little subplot that ties in with some of the rangers. Dogold has a centuries long rivalry with Uchi and is the reason Uchi lives to this very day. <laughs> Candelaria took a human form based on a pop idol as she loves to sing and is nearly hooked up with Nosan. Lakiro shares her love of manga with Ami. Igaram was responsible for Ian's partner's death. They are voiced by Satoshi Sudraoka. Haruka Tomatsu. Ayo Rakasa. And you, Mizushima. All of them have been in way too many anime series to list. There is a fifth general, the angry candle like Joker Endorf, voiced by Mega Blue himself, Masaya Matsukaze. <laughs> Demon Monster. 
頭が痛えああ悪い悪いこっちの話だお前らが憎すぎて今めまいがしたのさ Endorph is brought to show the other four how to properly handle the Kyorujers, which causes friction between d o g o l d and himself, especially given they both kind of represent the same emotion. I can't say I was particularly thrilled with Endorph, as he really didn't bring anything new to the table outside of the cool factor for who voices him. The monsters of the week all vary in theme as always, with a couple of memorable ones. The meteor based devil Nagaraboshi is voiced by the incredible ninja man Frankie Kazuki Yao. An interesting chef who alternates between good cook and bad cook. <laughs> A creepy doll creature that also features an alternate personality. A treasure based being. <laughs> and this dude. <laughs> Unfortunately, k y o d u j e r also likes to recycle the same monsters periodically, which means there are quite a lot you are going to see reused several times over. It works within the confines of the story, so it is hard to get too mad about it, even though it comes across as a cheap way to save on the budget. As for the grunts, called paramonsters, they are just a bunch of faceless white and green creatures with parasitic looking hair. <laughs> They can also grow big, which features them turning into some dinosaur like critter. <laughs> There is an additional set of grunts that show up every now and then to be cannon fodder. Juden Sentai Puns. Why is Togochi such a good volleyball player? Because he can really spike the ball. The Mecha. The show revolves around dinosaurs called Juden Ryu. So you pretty much know what you're going to get with the Mecha dinosaurs. Why would you not expect dinosaur mechs with your dinosaur themed series? Seriously, this is the third time, people. It's dinosaurs. The Red Ranger is going to have a T Rex because, of course, he does. What Sentai series would not give the Red Ranger a T Rex? It's like having an animal based series without the Red Ranger being a lion. In a surprising twist, however, the Pink Ranger is the Triceratops compared to Ju Ranger and Abba Ranger, where it was blue. No Sun's Dino Buddy is the Stegosaurus. We've also got a Raptor, Parasaurolophus, and a Pteranodon to complete our main six. An Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, Plesiosaurus, and Brachiosaurus make up the mecha for our backup members. The T Rex can combine with the other Juden Ryu to form various humanoid mecha, typically named Kyorujin, with some sort of title added to its name to signify what its main theme is. Everybody was kung fu fighting. 
Uchi's Pteranodon does the same thing while also having its own robot mode. The Plesiosaurus, Dean Pluzon, is a triple changer that can alternate between being a dinosaur, a rocket that can travel across space, and a robot mode. Finally, Yoru Silver's Bragagus also has a robot form, which merges with the batteries of the other Juden Ryu in order to form the massive Gigant Brachio. As a whole, I can't say they are my favorite mech combos. I also can't say I dislike them though as I do enjoy the concept of Western Kyorujin and Terror Gordon's overall design. I just wish the dinos utilized more suitmation than CGI, which was a common mistake Abba Ranger had made. At least Toei didn't pile the dinos on top of each other to make some outrageous kind of mech. Juden Sentai Puns What is Tarakera's dream job? Joining the Triceracops. The effects and music. With 40 Sentai reviews under my belt, you probably know what I'm gonna say about the effects and music at this point. For the most part, the effects are on par with Goldbusters. The new miniatures continue to impress. There is a lot more CGI used, which can look dodgy given how much it is overused for the mecha. It's a Sentai show, so there are of course some pretty cool fights. I just can't say the camera work wowed me the same way it did with its predecessor. There were still some solid moments, just nothing is jaw dropping. Uchika, Erika Uchi. Toshihiko Sahashi returns to helm yet another killer soundtrack for Toei, though I will say it is the weakest of his toku lot when compared to Kuga, Agito, Hibiki, and Ginga Man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you love the day boss theme because you will be hearing a multitude of variations of it. God damn is the day boss theme catchy as hell. Shogo Kamada energizes Kyoruger's viewers with his performance of Vamala Kyoruger, which is quite a solid opening. <laughs> Even the ending song, Mina Atsumare Kyoruger, is quite catchy. <laughs> I love how it is all puns with dinosaur names in it. 
Interestingly, I could have sworn the ending song included videos of viewers dancing to its tune when it first aired. But none of those were present upon this viewing. Either I have my series mixed up, or Toei altered the video versions of the show. And if that is the case, that is very disappointing. Juden Sentai Puns Why is Zakutor the fastest at preparing gifts? Because he's a Velociraptor. The Episodes Kyoroger is a pretty good show, albeit a simple, basic, safe one. It is to Super Sentai what Ultraman Max is to Ultraman. Like Max, its predecessor series failed miserably, resulting in the studio wanting something as basic as can be. This doesn't necessarily make Kyoroger a bad show, it just means it isn't anything special when compared to its fellowship. Goldbusters tried to be new, which was just too foreign. Kyoroger is familiar, which also makes it redundant. Still, I'll take it over many other series. It all being written by one man helps from a story point of view as nothing ever seems out of character, as it were. That does not mean the show is free from bad episodes, as there are a few I disdain with the worst of them being one that revolves around basketball. And that's all I really need to say to understand why Victory, the sports game, is a meh episode. A monster based on a basketball rim challenges the Rangers to a game of basketball. The episode spends most of its time with our heroes doing their overnight thing of becoming experts at whatever the plot requires to solve the issue. <laughs> it's just a flat out boring episode. Alternatively, good and cool, it's tough being an old man, is probably my favorite of the show because it's fun, energetic, and creative. This is the episode that features Yuka setting Nosan up with a possible date in Candelaria, which results in this funny thought from her. Talk de tsunai talk ka. Nanzute. Talk de tsunai talk. San no gyaku de uketeru. Kono hito yo. At the same time, a monster based on the movie set is attacking the city, and the Rangers find themselves in a variety of film genres mid battle, all of which are based on things Ami had to watch the night before. <laughs> It features a lot of stylish techniques used, and we get to see the Rangers fighting in interesting uniforms. Juden Sentai Puns Why doesn't anyone tell Parasagan a secret? Because he keeps shooting his mouth off. The movies end! Korean spin-off? Apparently, Kyoroger was such a success in South Korea that the television network teamed up with Toei to create a 12 episode series that's a sequel to Kyoruger using Korean actors. What? This new generation of heroes were chosen by a new set of dinosaurs and given the title The Brave. Or Power Rangers Dino Force Brave, as the series was known as Power Rangers Dino Force in Korea. When I learned of this notion, I was quite intrigued. I think this is the first time something like this had ever been done. The plot revolves around a new group of Dayball soldiers coming to Earth in search of a dinosaur king. Six new warriors are given the ability to transform into Kyodrujers, and they fight Neo Deboss. If you have ever dreamed of a Sentai series that was all action with little to no plot or character development, The Brave is for you. 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 Yeah, you. You. The one right there. Yes. That one. You. Uh-huh. You. 
Don't look at him. Don't look at him. No, you. I'm looking at you, not him. You. Each episode being 12 minutes long, with one minute for the opening theme, one minute for the ending song, about 30 seconds in each episode for a roll call, and then a required mech battle does not leave much room for any plot or character development. We barely learn anything about the Rangers beyond what is said in their debut episode, but we're made to believe they have grown so much by the end, despite it never being shown to us. And it harkens back to the Sentai series of the 70s and 80s, where the heroes were as flat as the scripts they were written on. What I recall about our heroes is Red is the second coming of Daigo, Blue is a singer or something. Black is a cop. Green is rich. And Pink hates Pink. Oh, Gold is the loner who likes gold. Another issue is the lack of civilian engagement. We only saw the Blue Rangers fans for a minute in the premiere, along with three kids who were on screen for the blink of an eye. <laughs> Beyond this, you would think the Rangers live in a world all by themselves. Overall, despite being around two hours in length to get through the whole series, I felt drained from the experience as if I had just crammed 20 something episodes into a single sitting. Toei also dubbed the show in Japanese, which. stick to the original Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the movies, Kyoruger has three of them. Our summer movie is, uh, something. It exists. It starts off mid-story during a concert with some idol the Rangers apparently became friends with off-screen, and to no surprise, she has a crush on Daigo. Why wouldn't she? An evil ranger using a Spinosaurus shows up because he wants the idol as his priestess. A total missed opportunity to do this, if you asked me. The typical stuff happens. We've got another sky beam, everyone breaks out into song for some reason. The whole thing is hard to describe as I'm still trying to figure out what was exactly going on in this one. At least the bike chase scene was cool. I think? It is odd how this movie would tie into the series compared to the relationships between the other series and their summer movies. The Spinosaurus mech even became a mainstay in the show while Death Ruger returned for an episode with our idol. <laughs> Next up was the annual versus film, but with a twist. It features the Jude Rangers and Abba Rangers to have a grandiose dinosaur team up. New versions of Griffizor and Girton, the cursed armor from Abba Ranger, arrive on Earth to bring about its destruction for their master, a multi-headed dragon-like beast. They team up with the Deboss Legion alongside a resurrected escape and enter to battle both the Kyorujers and Go Busters. 
なた方の力だけではありませんよあら素敵美男美女のご登場ね恐竜戦士の力を奪う装置を我々バグラスが提供したのもお忘れなく Geki and Ryoma are taken control by this creature. Both know Sun and Ryuji share a punishable offense at one point. So, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. The Kyotagers become power punks who can travel through time to take out the dinosaurs before they became Juden Ryu. All of this leads to a pretty cool battle at the end with the Go Busters and Kyotager teaming up with the Ju Rangers and Ava Rangers to fight our villains. There's a CGI recreation of Geki's T Rex, a climactic battle with Ava Reno, Kyotagin, and Dai Jujin. This movie kind of blows and is very boring at times. It's really just the cool factor of seeing the Ju Rangers and Abba Rangers in action after so long that makes it worth sitting through. Oh, and the Tokujers make an appearance in the post credit scene where their name is spelled differently from the show. The last film, Kyoto Returns, is set 100 years after the show's events. A new group of day boss arrives on Earth and is immediately intercepted by a new team of Kyoto Jers. Sounds like the Korean sequel series. It's probably the best of the three films, as it does have some entertainment value between the villains mocking our heroes for all having similar color schemes. <laughs> To some funny goodness with Lakiro. It did kind of remind me of the final scene of Die Ranger when we had the descendants of the Rangers taking on the roles of the heroes. Only this time, most of the cast is dead beyond a very old Soji. When it comes down to it, Kyoto Jir may not be the greatest Sentai series ever made, but it was a highly entertaining one. The gimmick is just fun and engaging, and the show is very story driven. However, because the show started to shift its focus to Daigo as the main player towards the end, I am going to give it a 3 out of 5 grown ups in spandex. I do recommend this one for any Sentai fan, especially if you are new to the franchise and looking for series to start with, as it makes for a good early edition of entertainment. It's not as good as Jude Ranger or Abba Ranger, but it still has its moments. Check it out. Until next time, bye.